Steak frites, or really just steak and fries. It's an incredibly classic French dish, but I'm gonna give you my take and show you how to make the most delicious, crispy fries of all time. We're gonna pan roast a New York strip and top it off with a delicious lemon herb butter. Sound good? Let's cook. We're gonna start off this recipe by making that herb compound butter. So go ahead and add some softened unsalted butter to your stand mixer with the paddle attachment and whip it for in between five and seven minutes on medium to high speed or until it's light and fluffy. Yes, you can absolutely use electric hand mixers or just whip it by hand if it's nice and soft. Once it is to this consistency, we're gonna add in some finely chopped fresh rosemary. Next, a little bit more finely chopped fresh thyme and then we're gonna hit it with some sliced green onions. I'm doing a lot here because I want that onion flavor and I don't want onions in it. We're gonna hit it with a bit of finely minced garlic. And next we want to grate in some lemon zest. I'm gonna be using a microplanes because it really grates it up nice and fine. It's gonna to blend together perfectly into the butter. And at the end, just give that microplane a little knock. It gets all the rest of that stuff out of there. And then squeeze a lemon in there. Get all that wonderful juice in there. Oh, snap. I think I lost a seed. Sometimes you got to stop the mixer and go fishing, my friends. So grab a spoon or whatever you've got and try to get that flipping lemon seed out of there. Perfect. Got it. Close the mixer back down. Let's continue to whip it because we need to add in about two teaspoons of sea salt and next some black pepper. Mix it till it is all combined. This is a fantastic, delicious butter and I really encourage you to taste it. Make sure it tastes good. Got it? Not of approval. We're good. At this point, we want to set it to the side and I'm simply going to put it into one of these plastic containers. They're really easy to store and I don't know, it's just part of the restaurant in me that likes these little delis. And then once it's completely in there, we're just going to pop a lid on it and leave it out at room temperature until it's ready to be used. This herb butter will last in the freezer for up to three months. Think about everything it will go good with. Fish, chicken, pork, even steak, or toss it in some vegetables or pasta. It's amazing. Put it in the freezer, pull it out when you need it. Now, onto the potatoes. I've got a few russet potatoes that we are gonna slice up. If you like big, thick, wedged potatoes, you can slice them that way. For me, I kind of grew up going to Steak and Shake and places like that, and I like a little bit thinner cut of a French fry. Be sure to take the time to slice these perfectly. You don't want oblong shaped potatoes, or I guess you can if you want. I'm gonna stack them up and then slice them again. You can see they're nice and uniform. It's a great way to get your knife practice on as well. But also, if you happen to have a potato French fry processor at home, run them through there. Next, I'm going to put them in a container of cold water. And what you want to do is sort of put your hand in there and work a little bit of that starch out of the potato into the water. This is what's going to ensure they are perfectly golden brown and crisp on the outside. So take a few minutes and get all the starch off there. Now we're just going to go ahead and fill up our deep fryer with canola oil. If you've got a pot, totally fine. Just fill it up with some cooking oil or any oil that you would love to use. We're gonna turn the temperature up to about 300 degrees. I know it's low, but it's gonna be all good. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Head over to your sink, strain the potatoes, and then grab your faucet. And we wanna to continue to rinse off any of the starch. I can't say it enough. This is the key and success to having crispy golden brown fries on the outside and tender in the inside. So once they are to that consistency, just give them a shake and set them aside. I'll stop for a second and just say, I know that it may seem just a bit tedious because all we're doing is making fries, but this process is gonna help make them so crisp on the outside and tender in the inside. You're literally gonna blow every fast food joint away that makes the most bomb fries. It's worth it, I promise you. So now what you wanna do is transfer the potatoes to a container. You don't wanna go straight from the strainer into that hot fryer oil or it's gonna blow up and you're gonna be really pissed at me because oil's gonna go everywhere. Go ahead and add a little bit into your fryer basket or directly into your oil that's at 300 degrees. We're gonna drop the basket and we're gonna cook it for three minutes. This is sort of a pre-blanch, pre-cook, starting to get those fries nice and tender. They're not gonna be brown yet, but this is gonna help caramelize some of that sugar that's on the outside of the fry. Set them to the side on a sheet tray lined with parchment paper or you can leave them in the basket. That's totally fine too. At this point, I'm gonna crank the fryer up to about 350 degrees, and this is great timing because it's time to hook up our steak. 
Got some beautiful New York strips. You could use filet mignon, you could use ribeye. This part is totally up to you. New York strip to me, that's the best of both worlds. Now we're gonna season it and season high. Be about a foot away from what you're seasoning so that it covers every little square centimeter and every bite is delicious. With sea salt, fresh cracked black pepper. Now head over to our cooktop. We are gonna turn the heat on high. I'm gonna add in a little bit of olive oil. And just like I always say, this is how you saute. Once your oil begins to lightly smoke, it's perfect time to start searing. So add in our New York strips and then immediately turn the heat down to medium and add in these ingredients. Some fresh thyme sprigs, move them around a little bit, some garlic cloves, and then follow it up with some unsalted cut up butter. I know it seems like we're deep frying here. I promise this is gonna incorporate so much amazing flavor into the steak. We're gonna cook it for three minutes per side for a perfect medium rare to medium internal temperature. Let's go ahead and have a look, see what it is. Yeah, that's really good, yeah. That's awesome. Okay, so now what we wanna do is baste our steak. When you do this, you're incorporating more flavor into it and you're helping to caramelize and brown up that other side. I throw a little bit of the garlic cloves on there to get some of that good flavor and I'll add a few thyme sprigs on there just to ha have all those flavors sort of infused down into the steak. It's gonna be really, really delicious. This is the only way you should be cooking steak, pork, fish, or chicken in a hot saute pan. I mean, perfectly golden brown, my friends. And now what you want to do is set it to the side, either on a plate, on a cutting board, whatever you've got. What this is going to do is allow our meat to rest. This is incredibly important because all those juices will have time to soak up, but this is also great timing for something else. I can't say it enough. This recipe is all about timing. The steak is resting. While it is doing that, we're going to cook up these fries for just a few minutes. It's all going to come together at the same time. So now go ahead and add in a few handfuls of your French fries into that fryer basket. You can do it in batches, totally up to you. Drop it in. We're gonna only cook it for another three minutes. We want them to get golden brown. Come back after a little while, give it a little shake, make sure it's not stuck together. Let's go ahead and have a look and we've got beautiful, delicious golden brown fries. And Comey's, it's just like I always say, once you understand these fundamental basics of cookery, like perfectly pan roasting that steak, getting that beautiful sear, you can apply it to all of your cooking. And anything you make homemade from scratch is gonna blow away all the stuff you get in a restaurant or in the store. It's worth it, it tastes way better. Now, it's time to plate up and let's go to slow mo. We're going to transfer the fries right over to a large bowl and I'm going to season it in one hand with salt while constantly rocking the bowl back and forth to make sure the salt covers the fries on all sides so that each bite is perfectly seasoned. Now go ahead and hit some of your steak with that delicious compound lemon and herb butter. This stuff is amazing. Let's have a few slices into this just to take a peek and make sure we're good. Yep, we've got a beautiful medium rare to medium internal temperature. If you want to go a little bit lower, maybe two minutes on the side, let's plate it up. I'm going to serve it on a cutting board because, well, why not? And then I'm going to put some fries in a basket and check out this beauty. This steak frites dish comes together in under 45 minutes. I mean, where else are you gonna get that? You better like this video, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to check out this recipe because you know it's bomb. I'll see you on there.